In the final weeks before the midterms, President Biden is doubling down on his commitment to protect abortion rights. This week, Biden promised that if Democrats retain control of the House and Senate, the first bill he would push Congress to pass would be legislation codifying abortion rights. Now, that pledge comes amid continued Republican threats to criminalize women who obtain abortions. Just this week, the Republican attorney general candidate in Wisconsin said he believed district attorneys should be able to cross county lines in order to prosecute abortion cases. The fight to protect abortion access now rests in the hands of the people. And people power is what has time and time again helped protect the right to choose in this country. Moments in the day when the building would literally come alive. I could feel it under my feet. by the crowd's behavior. Lieutenant Governor Dewhurst referred to the folks who were there as an unruly mob. They've since taken that mantra and worn it with pride. So that was a clip from the new MSNBC documentary, Shouting Down Midnight. It airs tomorrow night right here on MSNBC. It is about the fight for abortion rights in Texas and the effect that former Texas State Senator Wendy Davis had on the movement after she led a 13-hour filibuster to protect access back in 2013. And Wendy Davis joins us now. Wendy, it's great to see you. Thank you so much for joining us this evening. Um, what do you make of President Biden's announcement this week? Because the immediate thing that jumped out to me is that Democrats do control the House and do control the Senate right now, and they can still get things done if they wanted to between now and the new term and the new Congress uh, is sworn in. Why not do it now? Why wait till the new House and Senate? You know, that's a great question, Eamon. And of course, we understand the why not do it now is because some of our Democratic senators are not on board with making that happen. And they're not on board with ending the filibuster in order to make it happen. And it is our hope that we are actually in a position to pick up a couple of Senate seats that will hopefully change the game in that regard. And it's just another reminder of how important it is for us to vote with abortion at the forefront of our mind this November. I know that the economy and crime have been rising more and more in the day-to-day -day concerns of voters' minds, and I understand that absolutely. But we also, of course, understand that crime and our economic concerns tend to ebb and flow. Things will get better, and in a bipartisan way, people are committed to helping make sure that they will be better. But this abortion law is going to be with us for as long as it takes for us to elect people who are ultimately going to put national protections in place that are going to restore the rights of Roe. And I hope that people will feel that urgency and also just the long-term impact if they aren't voting with abortion as one of the most important issues top of mind for them when they go into that ballot box this November. You probably saw this as well, that um, it, with, uh, with now this in the Biden interview, he said that he would support a federal fund for people who need to take time off of work to get their abortions. Uh, today, the cost can be up to thousands of dollars if folks need to cross state lines. Uh, can you talk to us about this added financial toll for people who are already in very stressful situations? Sure. I was really happy to see the Biden administration talking about that, understanding that there are many barriers for people to be able to access abortion care outside of states like Texas. It's not just the cost of the procedure, which, as you said, can be in the thousands of dollars if you add the procedure and the travel costs together. It's also that many people cannot afford to take off work. They cannot afford the child care for other children that they have have in order to travel to access that care. And this is the Biden administration's way of trying to remove as many barriers as they have in their toolkit to remove, including the Pentagon saying that they will pay travel costs for members of um, the military who have to travel for abortion care. But the reality is, with all of that help, there are people who still will not be able to access that care. And one of those reasons is 
is, if you can imagine having to say to an employer, I need to take off time from work because I need to access abortion care. There aren't a lot of people who are going to want to have that conversation with their uh, their employers. And of course, there are many who don't have the privilege of being able to take off work. They will lose their jobs if they have to take off for three or four or five days, whatever the time period is going to be for them to travel and receive the care that they need. And it creates a caste system of abortion rights where people who have the privilege, who can afford to go elsewhere, who have jobs that they can take time off from, who can afford for their children to be put into child care, will be able to access that care. And people who can't afford those luxuries will not. Uh, Wendy, I want to go back for a moment to the NBC documentary on your um, remarkable and very moving filibuster back in 2013, where you read aloud the letters of women who shared their abortion stories with you. Uh, one of those letters was from a woman named Carol Wall. I want to just play this soundbite. Watch. I asked my doctor at one point, would she try to breathe if I delivered her while she was alive? And he... He nodded. No, I'm done. I can't do that. I can't watch her try to breathe when there's nothing they can do for her. We didn't find out until we were 20 weeks along, which is completely normal. If we had not had the choice to have her heart stopped and induce my labor, then we would have had to wait for her to pass on her own or leave the state. And because of the abortion bans throughout the country that we're seeing now, many people face mounting obstacles in getting life-saving abortions, like the one that you talked about in that, um, in that documentary. Talk to us about the urgency of, of this moment. It is a reminder, Eamon, that this is a right that you don't really realize you're going to need until you do. I had a very similar story to Carol's. And as you can imagine, it made this all too real and all too important for me. And I think we're starting to hear more and more of these stories in abortion prohibited states now where people are actually able to say, you know, I could actually put myself in those shoes. I can imagine that happening to me. And it is causing, I hope, more and more people to understand that abortion is health care. It is a right, a private right of health care that each of us should be able to access. And we can't imagine what tomorrow may bring in any of our individual lives that may make us face this very same decision. All the more reason that whether we believe personally this is something we might do, we need to protect the ability for those who choose this health care for themselves to receive it when they need it. 